Miracles have occurred throughout history, but are there supernatural answers for the emotional, financial, physical, and spiritual needs we face today? Miracles still happen, and in the next few moments, Sam Luke will share practical insights into knowing the God of miracles. Join Sam and the Victory Tabernacle Church family as we encounter a God who makes miracles still happen. Hello and welcome to Miracles Still Happen. Thank you for joining us today on the program. I have an exciting message for you. Now, it doesn't sound exciting because the title is Wounded and Worried. What does it mean? Well, back in the book of Judges, the first chapter, you have a story of somebody by the name of Adoni Bezek, which means Lord of the Lightning Flash, and he was a mighty man of war, and yet he was captured by the Israelites, and he became a crippled captive begging for crumbs under the table of the king of Israel. Well, what's the lesson to be learned? He was mutilated. They cut off his thumbs and his big toes. If you are a wounded warrior, maybe you started out to do something great for God and something happened along the way. Is there hope for you to get back in the fight? Can God restore you? Well, the answer is a resounding yes, and I want you to stay tuned because you're going to find out about it from God's Word as I share a message I call Wounded and Worried. Also remember, I'm here to be a blessing to you. That's what it's about. Uh, we don't sell anything here. We're not trying to make money. We just are here to love you and to share the good news of the gospel with you. So I have a gift for you. There are no strings attached, but I want you to have it, and you can have it if you call me today. It's 804-744-8881. That's 804-744-8881. Now, you keep that number handy because you might want to call through the program or after the program or even after we're off the air. And here's the offer. I prepared, my wife and I prepared, um, a series of scriptures and prayers and music that would bless and inspire and encourage you. So maybe you're one of those wounded warriors and you feel like giving up. I believe when you listen to this, you'll be encouraged. The Word of God gives light, and as you hear the Word of God, you'll be strengthened in the inner man and rise up to do great things. So I want to send it to you absolutely free. And again, the number to call is 804-744-8881. That's 804-744-8881. So do it right now. Let's go together into that service that's already in progress. And I'm speaking on the subject, Wounded and Worried. There's an interesting story in the book of Judges, the first chapter. It's the story of a Canaanite king named Adoni. Bezek, Lord of the Lightning Flash. Wow, that's impressive, isn't it? Well, it should be. He, he conquered 70 other Canaanite kings, and he mutilated them by cutting off their thumbs and their big toes. It was a common practice in ancient warfare, but he was captured by the Israelites and they did to him what he had done to others. They severed his thumbs and his big toes. And this conquering king became a crippled captive. And he stated in verse 7, What I have done to others, God has repaid me. This is a spiritual law of recompense. It is a divine principle. It's found in the Bible other places. What about Numbers 32, 23? Be sure your sins will find you out. What about Galatians 6, 7, and 8? Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of his flesh reap corruption. Now, the good news for every born-again believer is this. Because Jesus took your place and my place, we don't have to suffer the punishment and the penalty of our sins. 
The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5, 21, that he who knew no sin became sin for us, that we might be made the righteousness of God through faith in Christ. Romans chapter 5 and verse 1, therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Chapter 8 and verse 1, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. If you go back to the Old Testament in Micah, the seventh chapter, about the last verse in that chapter, it talks about how God has subdued our iniquities and He buried our sins in the depths of the sea. Because of what Christ did for us, you and I have been set free from the power and the punishment and the penalty of our sins. In the book of Galatians, uh, the, the question is asked, how can God be just and justify the sinner? Well, the answer is found in chapter 3 and verse 13 where it says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. So on one side of the coin, this law of divine recompense says that if you do wrong, eventually it will catch up with you and judgment is coming. But there is a, another side of the coin, and it is the positive side of this divine law that says what good things you do for others, God will make happen for you. That's why Jesus said, uh, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. In other words, if I bless you, a blessing is coming my way. So there is this divine law of recompense. But Adoni Bezek said, I mutilated 70 kings and caused them to crawl under my table begging for crumbs, but what I did to them has been done to me. Now, I want to talk to you about what it means to be a wounded warrior. Sometimes we're wounded, we're weary, and we're worried. And what do you do? when you lose your thumbs and your big toes. I started to make that the title of this message and it wouldn't fit on uh, the uh, DVD. <laughs> what do you do when you lose your thumbs and your big toes? I'm not sure anybody would understand that title anyway. So here's, here's what I, I, I want you to, to see. When they severed a captive's thumbs and toes, first of all, it meant that this particular person posed a threat to them. See, one of the reasons the enemy has been attacking you is because he perceives you to be a threat. You don't even know who you are. That's somebody say, you don't know who you are. The reason the devil is so upset is because he knows your potential even when you don't. And, and, and so what he wants to do is to incapacitate you. See, a person was mutilated who was a warrior because they wanted to incapacitate them and they wanted to humiliate them. See, if, if you lost your thumbs, you couldn't use a bow and arrow. You couldn't hold a sword. You couldn't grip a sword. And if they cut off your big toes, it affected your balance. And you had no ability to stand against an enemy with any strength anymore. And so you were incapacitated. Listen, if the devil cannot destroy you, and by the way, make no mistake about it, he's not out to annoy you. He means to destroy you. But if he cannot destroy you, he's satisfied just to get you off the battlefield just to incapacitate you. And so the, the second thing that he wants to do to us is humiliate us. I'm so glad I read in this book where it says, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. And any enemy that comes against me one way shall flee from me seven ways. And every tongue that rises up against me in judgment shall be condemned. I'm so glad that I found out greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. I'm so glad that I read in there where it says that God causes us always to triumph over the enemy through Christ. And Jesus said, I give you power and authority over all the power of the enemy. Somebody give God praise this morning. But, but there comes a time 
when I have to face my frustrations and deal with my frustrations. And one of the ways that the devil will cut off your big toes and your thumbs is through frustration. And sometimes I get frustrated with myself. Anybody ever get frustrated with yourself? I look at myself in the mirror when I'm shaving and I say, you rascal, you. You should be much further down the road spiritually than you are. What is wrong with you, you self-indulgent, self-obsessed, big sissy? What is wrong with you? Amen. You ever, you ever do that? Do you ever get frustrated with yourself? Now, wait, wait a minute. I hope I'm not the only one here that feels that way. Because Paul said, I know there's no good thing in this flesh of mine. He said in Romans, there are times when I want to do good and evil is present with me. He said that the, 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 the good things that I want to do, I can't do, and they're evil things that I don't want to do, and I end up doing them in spite of everything. You struggle with this flesh. We are tabernacled in flesh. That's why Paul finally said, I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me in the life which I now live in the flesh. I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Because we've got to deal with this flesh and you've got to experience from time to time some frustration with yourself. Secondly, I get frustrated With you. I said it. When people are disloyal and they're unfaithful, it robs me of my passion. I get distracted. I lose my vision. And so sometimes I not only get frustrated with me, I can get frustrated with you. I, I remember as a young minister, I, 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 I went to a man one time, and I was trying to talk to him about what I really felt like God wanted to do in the church. And I, I said, well, I just have a vision of doing this. He said, now, young man, let me tell you something. I've been in the way for 40 years, and I came this close to telling him, I know that's the problem. You're in the way. Get out of the way so we can do what God wants us to do. But I didn't say it. But I get frustrated with me. I get frustrated with you. Now, wait a minute. Hold on a second. I'm not finished. I can even get frustrated with God. Because if God is in control, then why does he allow certain things to happen to me? And I say, God, why did you allow this now? Of all times, why now? Why this? Why did you let it happen to me? And then I remember Romans 8, 28. God works all things together for good to those who love him and are called according to his purpose. I remember Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore will not we fear, though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof. The Lord of hosts is with us, and the God of Jacob is still our refuge. Hallelujah. And God is working his plan in your life and in my life even when we can't see it. Now, I got to tell you that sometimes there's this thing that is called the discipline of detours. Everybody say the discipline of detours. And what many times appears as a detour is actually part of God's plan to toughen us, to try us, and to test us. I hear people say, God knows. God knows. Yes, he does, but you don't. God knows. He'll say, God knows what's in my heart. Here it is. But, but you don't. Not always. You think you do. You ever heard anybody say, I'll never turn back. You can count on that. And the first time there's any kind of opposition, they wilt like a wet noodle. You just thought you knew what was in your heart. I'll never quit on God. God never quit on me. And the first time the pressure's turned on, I got to get out of here. I didn't sign up for this. So you don't always know what's in your heart. But what God will do is God will allow certain circumstances and he'll allow situations in our lives 
so that he can test and try us and ultimately toughen us up so that we can be everything that God wants us to be. When God led the children of Israel out, he took them by way of the Red Sea. And the Bible says it wasn't near. That's an understatement. That's like saying the Titanic had a little leak. He led them by way of the Red Sea because he knew that if they encountered enemies, they wouldn't be able to stand. And God said, I've got to do something. You're slaves. You have a slave mentality. You're desperate. I've got to get you to the place where you're sons and you can be dependent. And if I can get you to that place, I can take you to another mature level called a uh, 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 soldier so that then you can become uh, de delivered and do what I want you to do. So as slaves, you're desperate, but as sons, you're dependent. And as, as soldiers, you're delivered. And so God says I, there's a process, and that's why he led them out into the wilderness, and it took him 40 years to get Egypt out of them. It took him one night to get them out of Egypt, but it took 40 years for God to get Egypt out of them. Somebody say amen. amen. The wilderness is necessary in our lives because many times we aspire to a ministry that exceeds our present level of maturity. When David went to meet Goliath, Goliath, he rehearsed the story of how God had allowed a bear to come out of the woods and a lion and to test him so that before he met Goliath, he was ready because he knew what God could do in the crucible. He knew that Christ, uh, that we know today that Christ is the Christ for every crisis and he'll help you through every situation. So I've, I've stopped praying for God to release me. I'm just praying that God will mature me. Wherever you find significant ministry, you'll find sacrifice. One of, one of the things about our generation that just boggles my mind is that we, we've now arrived at the place where we don't want to talk about sacrifice. And it's, it's seeped into the church. Jesus said, if you're going to be my disciple, deny yourself, take up your cross and follow me. But we don't even want to be inconvenienced. We, we don't want to talk about discipleship because we know that it requires self-sacrifice and self-denial. But anytime you find significant ministry, you'll find that somebody has made a sacrifice. Uh, you know, there, there's this great story in the Bible about a man by the name of Ornan. Everybody say Ornan. Aren't you glad your name is not Ornan? <laughs> what a name. There's a lot of crazy names in the Bible. Hazel Pony. <laughs> How would you like to have that name? Um, Anub, A-N-U-B. I'm glad my name is Sam. And so Ornan the Jebusite played a pivotal role in this story as it unfolds where David disobeyed God and God brought judgment on Israel. And he said, I'm going to send an angel with a flaming sword. And lo and behold, David looks up and here's this mighty angel and towering above the city with a flaming sword. And he's headed toward Jerusalem. And he rushes out and he offers a sacrifice at the threshing floor of Ornan the Jebusite. Now, let me give you the back story. How many of you ever heard of Jebusites before? You know, what, you know why Jebusites are significant in, in this context? They occupied Jebus, which was Jerusalem, before it was Jerusalem. Nobody had ever uh, been able to drive out the Jebusites. All those different uh, Canaanite kings and all the different uh, uh, groups that had come against Israel, Moses and uh, Joshua were able to drive them out. But when they got to the place that would become the holy city, Jebus, they couldn't do anything with them. They were, they were overpowered by the Jebusites. And uh, we went to uh, uh, Israel uh, a couple of years ago. Uh, uh, Gloria and, and Roy uh, were, were with us on that trip. And we went into uh, the, uh, the, the, the tunnel that was dug by the Jebusites from their city, their fortress, down to get water. And that's how David managed to get up in the city. And he told his mighty men, he said, the first one up, I'm going to make you a captain. So, boy, they go up into the city and they take Jebus. Now, here's the point. 
Ornan the Jebusite was used in this story. And, and, and what I'm trying to tell you is you may feel like an outsider. You may feel like you don't belong. You may feel like, well, I wasn't raised in a Christian home. Well, I didn't go to a Christian college. Well, I didn't have all the benefits and blessings that some of these people have that seem to be enjoying Pentecost. I, I'm kind of an outsider. I wasn't raised this way. Some of you may have been raised in Catholicism. Some of you may have been raised as a first-class, genuine, bona fide heathen. <laughs> Card-carrying. You don't have all those stories that some of us have, but you say, I'm an outsider, but God brought me in. I was outside. He brought me inside. Amen. And so Ornan was not an Israelite. He was a Jebusite. And when David comes down and sees this angel, guess who else sees it? God allowed Ornan to see it too, an outsider. And, and for some reason, Ornan must have done something to help David because he was given prime property and so he looks up and sees what David sees, and he says, let me give you this, this ground, this parcel of ground. And, and, and why don't you take my oxen, and, and you can kill him, and we'll cut him up, and we'll let him be the sacrifice. And, and, and we don't have any wood quick. He said, let me, let me give you my, my implements, my farming implements, the plow. We can break that up and, and burn a fire here. And he had it all figured out, and David looked at him. He said, "How?" listen, he said, how can I offer to the Lord something that cost me nothing. And some of you are being blessed on somebody else's sacrifice and you don't have any appreciation for it. We didn't just come in here yesterday and start having church. If you want to go up and look on the walls and we'll put them on both walls up in the office area and on this side in our new classrooms, there are pictures of the progression of this church where it started how it got started, and those that have made a sacrifice, those who prayed and fasted. We didn't just start praying on a Monday night since I got here. You've been praying. You've been fasting. You've been believing God. You've been trusting God. Some of you for 40 years or longer, you've been holding forth. You've been saying, I'm going to believe God. The great things that are going to happen here will be uh, 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 because of the sacrifices that somebody made a long, long time ago. You don't know their name. You won't know them till you get to glory. But somebody said one day right here in Richmond, Virginia, there'll be a church that preaches the gospel of Jesus Christ and will bring deliverance to the captives and we're going to be a part of it. And I'm grateful to God for all those that have gone before us. We're standing on the shoulders of great men and women that have sacrificed. But David said, listen, this, this is not how it works. I can't make a sacrifice that costs me nothing. I've got to buy this from you. And he bought it from Ornan the Jebusite. And he made a sacrifice. And when he did, God stayed the hand of that angel, that avenging, avenging angel, and turned him around. And you fast forward now. And on that very site, Solomon, David's son, been a, built a temple so awe-inspiring, so magnificent that the queen of Sheba said, I, it, it blows my mind, the half has never been told. They said it was beautiful. They said it was magnificent. Miss, magnificent. They said it was, it, it was a thing of splendor, but, but I, I, I couldn't imagine. It's just breathtaking, the beauty of it. And there on that spot, there was worship and praise and glory that was given to God. But it was built above the ashes of the sacrifice that David made. On the threshing floor of Ornan the Jebusite. Some of you have prayed and prayed and prayed for your families. You've prayed for your children. You've prayed for a miracle. You've heard prophecy after prophecy. God said it's coming. You're going to see it, but it's going to rise above the ashes of your sacrifice because you made a significant contribution a long time ago. Let's pray together right now. Pray this prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you in Jesus' name. I need you. I'm hurting, and I need you. I know you care about me. You never gave up on me, and I'm not going to give up on the calling you've placed on my life. Have your way in my life. Renew, restore, 
revive and refill me in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Praise the Lord. I believe God's heard that prayer. And you know, I believe someone is out there and there was a calling on your life. Uh, Some time back, you, you, you took a wrong turn. But God is saying to you, I didn't give up on you. I didn't quit on you. And don't you quit on me. You come to God today in faith and God will restore you and God will take you where you need to be for Him and He'll do it today. It's not going to be a long process. It won't take you weeks or months or years, but today God will restore you completely and fully. I want to hear from you. Call me now at 804-744-8881. That's 804-744-8881. And when you call, be sure to request meditations on the God of miracles. It's something I've prepared just for wounded warriors today. So you can have it. If you'll call one more time, here's the number, 804-744-8881. Now, I repeat that number quite often. The reason for that is that some of you are watching me on television, some are listening on the radio. I want you to have that number. Hang on to it. Keep it. You may need it even after we're off the air. So one more time, 804-744-8881. After you give your heart to the Lord, what's next? The most important thing in your life is to find the right church by the right church, I mean a Bible-believing, Christ-centered, spirit-filled church. That's the kind of church we are here at Victory Tabernacle, and I invite you to join us here Sunday morning, beginning at 10 o'clock for two full hours of praise and worship and ministry from the Word of God and always a time together in His presence around the altar. Remember, if you can't be here in person, and that's what we want, but if you can't be in person, you can still join us in worship by going to our website. That's victorytab.com. Dot org and click on Ustream. It begins at 11 o'clock. For a full hour, you can join us in worship, and you'll hear the Word of God, and you can be blessed right where you are. We have so many people who call and write and say, I was blessed. It was just as if I were sitting in that service. So again, go to our website, victorytab.org, and uh, click on Ustream beginning at 11 o'clock every Sunday morning. Also remember the last Sunday of every month, it's our Miracle Sunday, which means we have an additional service at 6 o'clock in our chapel, so be sure to join us. God is confirming His Word with mighty signs and wonders and miracles. During the middle of the week, find us right here on Wednesday night in our Family Enrichment Night service where we have something special for every age group and every member of the family. Royal Rangers for the boys, Missionettes for the girls, a dynamic youth program for our teens, a ministry to college and career age young people. I'm teaching in the main sanctuary and our Hispanic congregation will meet in uh, the chapel. So be sure to check it out. It starts at seven o'clock and at 8.30, we're walking out the door. It's fun, it's exciting, it's relevant. Thank you for being a part of our program today. One more time, I'd like you to know I have a gift for you and all you have to do is call me is 804 that's 804-744-8881. We'll send it to you right away. One more thing. Uh, when you go to our website, and I mentioned it before, victorytab.org, you can click on uh, Victory Battle Cry, which is our 24-hour uh, Internet uh, network. You can, anywhere in the world, listen to Victory Battle Cry, inspirational uh, uh, music, testimonies, gospel preaching, Bible teaching, uh, you'll love it, so be sure to check it out. And that's, uh, again, victorytab.org, and go to Victory Battle Cry. Thank you for being a part of the program today. May the Lord bless you, and until we're together again, just like this, around the Word of God, this is Pastor Sam reminding you that here at Victory Tabernacle, faith brings a victory, and miracles still happen.